RWE, one of the biggest energy companies in Europe, wants to cut this forest down to expand Europe's largest open cast mine, which is right there behind us. Um, so yeah, it's about 1,000 acres of beautiful old growth woodland and they want to completely destroy everything and dig a big hole here, so that's why we're here. This land here, this forest, is owned by RWE, the big energy company. They bought it for uh, 25 euro cents per square meter, <laughs> so for nothing. Uh, and we occupied it now, we squatted it to avoid that they will cut it down, destroy it and uh, dig out coal here and burn the coal produce energy. There are also people here that already squatted houses and uh, it's not only sympathy, it's the same method. We take, we take place to live here but even more also to stop a big energy company to destroy this region or the whole world through climate change. We had some trees with platforms and we're building tree houses now. Uh, so if they are going to evict us, we'll try to make the eviction as hard as possible and as expensive and yeah, uh, with as much uh, publicity as possible. So we can draw some attention to the issue of open cast coal mining and uh, coal combustion and um, the production of electricity through coal, which is the dirtiest form of energy production we have at the moment um, because yeah, climate change is here and uh, they are expanding Europe's climate killer number one which is here so uh, yeah I don't know if we'll be able to stop it maybe if more people come then I think it would be possible maybe but at the moment we more want to draw attention to these issues and to show people in surrounding communities other ways of resistance. We're here now since three weeks and for me it's amazing how much has been built up and it was not planned when will we build up what but just people organized themselves and one person was saying in the morning hey I would like to build a compost toilet today so who can help me and then they organized themselves in a small group made the decision in a small group so it's really decentralized the decisions and also the work and like this a lot of things has been built up in only three weeks and yeah I'm sh optimistic that if the weather will get better that much more people will come, but the infrastructure is there now for much more people. This is the Hamba Forest Occupation Camp. Uh, this is the entrance here. So over there is our kitchen and the communal space where we meet, eat and discuss what we are doing. Um, here is a info thing. It's not very big yet, <laughs> but there will be more stuff. Um, yep. So uh, that's the vegan kitchen. Everything is vegan. We uh, do a lot of dumpster diving to get our food. Uh, we've got also a vegan kitchen back there. Um, we always cook on fire because uh, there's no other way, we don't use the gas normally. We've got many people here that are vegan and uh, we said we don't want the uh, like, middle of the communal space uh, to have uh, vegan stuff in there because uh, some vegan people uh, feel uh, like disturbed by that. So we said we're gonna have the vegan kitchen a bit more outside so people who want to eat vegan stuff can go there and 
uh, yeah, don't get in the way of the vegans. <laughs> we try to connect also the topic of producing energy with, for example, climate change, and we said also with uh, world hunger, and it's. Uh, so we try also to connect other parts of our life here uh, with those questions, general questions like who is producing what and how and for which, for which reason and who is making this decision. So this is a place where we just eat vegan and where you find only vegan food because also uh, vegetarian or meat food uh, is causing climate just problems and climate change and uh, a lot of other problems so and the forest is big so there's a, there's also a place where people eat vegan dumpster dived food that is not vegan and yeah but just here is like the vegan kitchen <laughs> to produce animal products like milk butter cheese but meat also uh, you need a lot of energy and a lot of food uh, that you give to the animals and uh, it's also a water problem in a lot of regions so often the food for the animals is produced in countries or parts of the world where food and water is missing uh, but there you have like big landowners that own the land and that is producing this for what they get the most money and it's from the big western companies uh, for animal food and not for the from the local people food and yeah of course it's also an animal right question for a lot of pe people uh, yeah we flush dishes like we do everything together everybody should do his part um, this is going to be a fridge in the earth, so because everything's a bit cooler down there, we'll store our food there. Um, this is a kitchen material tent. Um, over there we have the freegan kitchen and a bit of uh, construction wood. Freegan means uh, that it's dumpster dived, so we get uh, all our food from the bins of supermarkets in the area and uh, the freegan stuff we bring here is like cheese and, and milk products, eggs. Back there we got a tiffy since yesterday. Uh, here we've got a hole to uh, put grey water in uh, so it gets a bit filtered before it gets into the soil. We've got a beet. Uh, some people planted vegetable and herbs a couple of days ago. And this is where we are building the healthy ground house. Uh, it's gonna have like these windows here, and inside there's a fireplace with a hole above it so the smoke can go up. And it's all gonna be. Um, made with clay so it's winterproof uh, so we'll have a warm dry place uh, for communal stuff in winter at the moment RWE said they, they're gonna tolerate us here because of our right to free speech <laughs> um, so they don't want to evict us now but uh, they're probably gonna start cutting here in autumn so we don't know if we'll get evicted there or make it through the winter. But we said we're gonna stay here as long as possible. <coughs> we're here to stop the diggers. So we only leave when we voluntarily, uh, if we know that the diggers won't come here and this forest will be left. Over, over there we've got a shower. Uh, which is the biggest and most comfortable shower I ever had. Really nice, with all the trees around. And we've got solar shower bags, so the water gets heated by the sun. 
So you can even have warm showers here. So it's really nice, big. Okay. Very comfortable. And how you get the water? Uh, the water is in the bags up there. Mm -hmm. we'll, we fill it uh, in the kitchen. And because they are black, uh, it gets hot when, when it's put in the sun. Okay. And here's our free shop. So, we've got basically clothes here and. Uh, yeah, we've got shoes and books and everything here is for free. So, uh, yeah, anybody needs something, just grab it or bring stuff. It should be of reasonable quality, so not the last trash. Yeah, that's basically what we have for now. Uh, back there, someone's building a compost toilet. It's a really big construction there. And we've got a compost place. Um, yeah, here's where we get all our construction wood. It's, all the trees are were felled by RWE, and we just use them now because they're letting be rotten here. Yeah, and up there, somebody's building a tree house at the moment. We've got a hammock and uh, a tree bed in there at the moment, and a platform up there. And two more platforms uh, fit more spread into the forest. We have each day persons coming here from the villages around that bring food or just tell us that they really like what we are doing or ask how we, they can support and uh, a lot of them tell that for them it's a really important thing this occupation because since decades since years there are persons trying to do something against this uh, RWE in this region and all their uh, plants, uh, power plants and all their coal digging here in this region but mostly like on a political party way or in front of Kurt and they never really succeeded so a lot tell us now they are optimistic again and finally they see something where they can really do something by their own and not just hope that politicians or judges will change something but they start to see possibilities how to do something by their own against this and for another region for another society i i, I, I try to help we live in Bure. it's the place uh, near or, or behind the, the forest and we uh, think this here is a good thing and we want to help a little bit. What did you build? Um, something to eat and something for fire. The local residents have been really supporting. Uh, there's a, a lot of visitors coming here asking how they can help and bringing us stuff. And they said we, we're basically doing here what they want and uh, yeah, they're really glad that we're here. and it feels really good this way of living together of organizing basics of living together like organizing food like organizing water uh, like dealing how how are other persons feeling and okay to make decision this is a vegan kitchen and a lot of things like that it's it's really for my opinion, really great and solidaric atmosphere and 
where you can learn a lot and like practical stuff how to build but also like theoretical we had a f interesting discussions about a lot of topics near to the fire or the whole day I really enjoy it because I'm in the forest all the time and you can hear the birds and uh, the air is really nice except sometimes a cloud of dust from the open cast mine comes in um, yeah people here come and go there's only quite a small group of people staying here all the time and yeah it feels like a bit of family if you are around the same group of people all the time uh, atmosphere is really nice we we try to uh, watch out for each other so um, try to create an atmosphere of non-hierarchical uh, living together. We had uh, a group working on this issue before the occupation because uh, there have been problems in other occupations with drugs and people using drugs just to come here, to, to use it as a chill out space. But we want this here to be a political project and we want to do work here and some people uh, also feel disturbed by people who are under drug influence uh, when they're just hanging around drunk or whatever and it's a bit counterproductive so we said uh, the communal space is drug free so you can smoke cigarettes and drink coffee but that's it no alcohol no weed no other drugs uh, in the communal space and what you do in your own space like your tent or whatever is your thing but you shouldn't come uh, to the communal space when you're under the influence of drugs and like could maybe disturb other people with that. This camp is not uh, organized or made by a closed group of persons but it was from begin on a really open process uh, we told as many people as possible that we are preparing this and a lot of new people joined and now there are a lot of new people coming here also and we also a lot of us got to know ourselves one to each other here so it's not a closed group of persons so everybody is welcome to join here on their way on their methods to build something or to support in any way and we see also people that come just for a few hours here per day but don't sleep here as part of this occupation and yeah there's there's not like an inner circle of occupation <laughs> if you want to do something good against climate change and live in a nice community and uh, yeah do something against the destruction of this forest then come here come in masses and uh, Bring stuff as much as you can and yeah, you're always welcome. <laughs>